Coin Cambria just came out with a new album, Faxes to a Window of the Waking Mind, and it blew me away. Uh, this album uh, is their 10th studio album uh, following uh, Vaxis 1, The Unheavenly Creatures, which I thought was a major step up from their f uh, previous albums, Color Before the Sun and The Afterman, Ascension and Descension, which I thought were okay, and I liked a few songs from each of them, but were nothing like the, the gloriousness of Second Stage Turbine Blade and Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth and both good Apollo albums. And Year of the Black Rainbow, actually, even though I didn't love it when it first came out, really, really grew on me overall in their entire discography. And it's something that I come back to and like to jam to every now and again. Uh, so what are the highlights of this album? I honestly went into this album not knowing what to expect. Um, they released four singles uh, in order, Shoulders, which when it came out, I was like, this is kind of a cooler, heavier vibe for Coheed. Uh, and I listened to it like crazy uh, at the tail end of 2021. It was actually my most listened to uh, uh, song on Spotify. So uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. Uh, I'm a little bit burnt out of it now since uh, the album is released, but it's still a great song on its own merits. Uh, after that came Rise Nyanasha. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, and that that was so good. It was it was one that was very different sounding for Coheed. They have a really cool uh, verse uh, that starts it off like really quick and just like throughout the whole thing, the guitar is just going with this cool little riff. And uh, for me personally, it was one of my favorite uh, songs on the album. Uh, and that held up after the album came out. It was one of my favorite single for sure, uh, but got even better after I listened to it within the context of the album in its entirety. Uh, some of the other standouts, or the, the two other singles we'll get to first was uh, The Liars Club, which I thought was really, really catchy, but kind of overly simplistic to me. I like I put a little cover out on this uh, thing, and I, I literally just learned the chords by ear. I know it's more complex on the album, but still, I thought it was just a little bit too simplistic, and although it's definitely an earworm, not something that I was like super stoked about for Coheed as a progressive rock band that they are. Uh, then uh, the last one they came out with was Comatose, which I thought was more of the same for Li with what I thought of Liars Club, except for had a really good rhythm and bass section that was just really driving it um, uh, and puts it a little bit ahead of the Liars Club, even though, again, in the context of the album, I think Whereas Shoulders, I was kind of burnt out of. I think I, I ended up liking the singles more within the context of the album. So the album opens, uh, firstly, with, um, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, the Embers of Fire. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, and I think it's been confirmed, that it's Atlas, uh, Claudio Sanchez, who's the front man of the band, lead singer, and the guy that does the concept story with his wife, Chandra, uh, they have a child, Atlas, and uh, he's featured first, well, is, is, he's got a song in Color Before the Sun, which is actually my favorite song from that album called Atlas, and they use his voice uh, to kind of do a little reply, reprise of uh, Old Flames, uh, which was on the previous album, uh, and, and it was a single as well. And I like that they tied it together with, uh, and I, I had to go back and, and two Unheavenly Creatures, they're like, oh yeah, that's so cool, because they ended it with Old Flames. They didn't, of course, they ended it with uh, Lucky Stars. So I think there's a missed opportunity there. But nevertheless, I, I like how they open with that little tune from Old Flames, uh, both for uh, Vaxus 1, Unheavenly Creatures, and now for Vaxus 2, um, uh, window of the waking mind and it, the album also ends with that reprise as well uh, and I really really enjoyed that uh, so it opens super epically uh, it's it's it starts with the little embers of fire sound quite literally uh, then Atlas comes in and then the next he does a little scream thing which I, I love whenever Kohi does their little uh, Nazgul screams uh, in their albums uh, and then Claudio, of course, comes in, and now the album started. It's kind of just like a minute, I think a minute 30 song or something that opens up the album. Uh, and then it jumps into um, 
Comatose, I believe, is the next on the on the album. Uh, talked about that a little bit. Uh, definitely, like I said, it. Oh no, it's not. It doesn't go into Comatose. It goes into Beautiful Losers first, which is a new song. Obviously, well, the album's brand new, but uh, it wasn't one of the singles. And uh, I really, I really enjoyed Beautiful Losers. I think I've enjoyed it more as as I've gone along. Um, but yeah, solid track, um, again, but didn't blow blow me away. I was like, okay, this is pretty on par. Then Comatose uh, comes out after that one, uh, and then Shoulders, so it's two familiar songs after that. My dog's barking in the background. Um, anyways, uh, so those two songs are solid, but again, I was just, uh, I was enjoying it for what it was. The opening was really good. Uh, I think Shoulders flows into, let me pull it up here. That would probably help. Uh, window of the waking mind songs. List. There we go. Uh, so yeah, comatose or shoulders goes into oh yeah five a disappearing act. Uh, now I know a lot of people didn't love the sound of a disappearing act. Because it does get a lot more poppy, it almost is like a uh, weekend song uh, in terms of its like '90s, like electronic kind of vibes. But honestly, this is probably my fourth favorite song off the entire album, and it's only grown on me uh, the more I've listened to it. So definitely, uh, definitely vibed with me a lot. I love the disappearing act and. Uh, this is where I started getting more into it as a brand new songs. It's followed by Love Murder One, which is probably my fifth favorite song on the whole album. And it was, it's again, a kind of a different vibe for Kogi, but it just shows them they're a progressive, uh, you know, progressive rock band. And that's what I love about them. They change a big change. I think for them, their first three albums, they do all sound different, but I think a lot of people view that as their, their top three. Some people include the fourth album too of uh, No World for Tomorrow. Uh, I love all those albums. The first three are probably, I, I mean, Good Apollo, Burning Star 4, Volume 1. Good Apollo and Burning Star 4, Volume 1. From Fear to the Eyes of Madness, I know Arlo, uh, is still my favorite overall. Um, I'm going to take you, this is super professional. I'm going to take you so I can get my dog, because he is not a happy boy. Are you, Bubs? Not a happy boy, you need to be let out, don't you? Anyway, um, so that uh, was kind of like classic Coheed, and then we had Year of the Black Rainbow after that kind of arc of the first four albums, and a lot of people didn't dig that, including me at first. Uh, I think I already said in the beginning of this video, but it's really grown on me. And so I like that they changed, even the stuff that I didn't like as much um, with, you know, uh, the Ascension, Descension, Afterman albums. There's still stuff that I love on that. Domino, The Death Suit, The Afterman, uh, Mothers of Men. Uh, there's tons of the tons of songs that's, that's Ascension. Uh, and even Color Before the Sun, the only one that they had that wasn't based on the concept of the Amory Wars and Coheed and Cambria. I always need to be let out. Uh, I would say those are, I even though they, they weren't exactly for me in their entirety, I appreciate that Coheed always is willing to branch out and do new things and good things too. Like just because they weren't my favorite, it doesn't mean the quality was less. The only thing knock I'll have against Coheed and Cambria in their more modern versions is I don't think their lyrics are as strong or as um, they're a little more cliched like a lot of you'll find a lot of cliches in their lyrics now for their modern ones and that includes the, both the Vaxxas albums I would say uh, with the exception of like the last three songs of this album which I think get a lot more interesting and you get some cool lyrics too and like um you know, love, murder, one, disappearing act. I feel like there is there is more variety. I was worried it would be more ho hum lyrics, but um, I really liked it. I really like this album as a whole. It's uh, it does some things really well. Oh my my dog is just eating eating the grass. Come on, bud. Oh, no more eating grass. Oh. <laughs> okay. Arlo, right, you gotta come inside, bud. All right, go pee. 
trying to keep my dog alive while doing this review. Um, so yeah, those are the first uh, few songs on the album I left off, Love Murder One, had some backstory with Coheed and I think their progression. But yeah, the, the new sound, I really dug it on this album, even though a lot of people are kind of hating on it. Uh, Love Murder One is followed up by Blood, which is a little more of a toned down, kind of like a, uh, it's actually quite a sweet song. Um, doesn't do anything too crazy. It's probably lower on my list for the album as a whole, but it, for me, there's not a single bad song on this album. Even, even the songs I'm more burnt out on or the songs that aren't as complex, they're still super, super solid. Um, let's see, uh, Blood, yeah, so Blood is a really solid track. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's very heartfelt. Uh, a lot of this has to do with Claudio's own relationship with his son and with his wife. And so even though it's a fictional story that he, he does it around, you can really see the kind of parental love for, uh, for, you know, Vaxis in the story, Atlas in real life. And that really bleeds through all of the songs here actually. And, and a lot of the ones, uh, on the previous album as well. Um, Blood is followed by The Liars Club. Uh, again, uh, probably the most catchy song. Probably probably will be the most popular, if not already. I mean, Shoulders, I think, is the most streamed, but it also came out first. So I wouldn't be surprised if The Liars Club... Like, some of these songs, you know, and people probably use this as a, uh, as a diss to Coheed, but some of these songs you could actually picture hearing on the radio, which is not something that you'd say for uh, their earlier work for the most part. and But I actually kind of like that. I, I mean, I don't listen to the radio much, but if, if Coheed was, was playing on, I would be bopping that uh, in, in the car for sure. Um, so Liars Club, very catchy. Uh, there's only fault I would say is that it's, it's a little too simplistic uh, in terms of looking for the complexities of a kind of a progressive band. But hey, I, I think it's great. I like it and it will definitely draw in maybe some more casual fans that, or people that aren't even Coheed fans that kind of, this is their kind of gateway into it. And then they could maybe discover those earlier albums that a lot of the fan base really loves and holds dear, including myself. Um, uh, then comes uh, Bad Man. And I really liked this song when I first heard it. I think it is probably one of my least favorite. I don't know what it is, but the chorus was a little, a little cheesy. Um, but I like it. It's it's more like a disappearing act in Love Murder One with the kind of some vocals, uh, vocal additions, almost auto tune. Uh, although Claudio definitely doesn't need auto tune. It's kind of some there's I'm you know there's some sort of modulation with the voice there, and there's some uh, more electronic uh, uh, feels to this one. Uh, but it's it's fun. It's a bop. I like it. That flows into Our Love, which is just a two minute 30 song uh but it's a real good setup for the last three i think and it is more of like a love ballad pure i could see people using this as their like wedding song uh definitely if they're coheed fans i could definitely see this being like a 2022 2023 and onward uh you know wedding dance first dance thing it's it's kind of that kind of vibe i enjoy that that one and blood are probably the most stripped down um chill songs on the album this one it's just a really good love song. Coheed and Cambria usually has one, uh, whether it's Wake Up from uh, Good Apollo 4 or whether it's uh, Two's My Favorite One from Dissension. Uh, they always seem to sneak at least one, you know, not not always typical love song. This this one's a pretty typical love song, but it's it definitely has a Coheed flavor to it. My hair, I just realized, is doing an alfalfa, but say la vie, already in 13 minutes into this video, and uh, I'm not editing it back or, or redoing it, so here we go. Um, next, Ladders of Supremacy. Okay, this is where the album, I was like, okay, this went from a pretty decent Coheed album to like, oh my goodness, this song is so good. It is the epitome of prog rock and everything that I love about Coheed. I gotta check on my dog. Um, but it honestly, honestly blew me away. And I was like, okay, Coheed and Cambria, they still have it. You know, 20 years later, uh, I think it's been 20 years since their first album, that or, or close to that. Um, and they're still rocking it. Hey, bud, look at that dirty snow. <laughs> He's been digging in the dirt. Been digging in the dirt, hey, bud. Yeah, so I can't leave him alone. He's still a puppy, six months old. His name's Arlo. 
make an appearance on on the on the thing uh, on this review. Uh, his thoughts are I don't know if he's heard it actually. I've been mostly listening to in the headphones. So I'll give you my dog's review maybe later. Probably won't, but I'm sure he loves it. He's he's big into my kind of music mostly because he has to listen to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ladders of Supremacy might be my favorite on the album. I think is my favorite on the album, but honestly, these last three songs, 13 songs on the whole album, these are the final three, are my favorite by far on the album. <clears throat> so Ladders of Supremacy, just, it kicks it. And it is like one of their longer songs on the album. This one's either five or six minutes long, I think six minutes long. Uh, the last three are actually all longer. Six minutes, Ladder of Supremacy, Rise Nyanesha, Cut the Chord is five minutes or so, and Window of the Waking Mind is eight minutes, uh, finishing in epic fa fashion as uh, Coheed and Cambria love to do. Um, but yeah, this, <clears throat> that's another thing with most of the songs being around three, three and a half minutes, it's a much shorter album. Um, I think it comes in still at 53 minutes, so still pretty pretty good but uh the album before um Vaxis one on heavenly creatures every song almost every song was like five minutes or more <clears throat> the dark sentencer was like seven minutes with the prologue it was like 10 minutes you doing okay bud okay um and so i i kind of liked it though i i love unheavenly creatures but man there's the songs are long and it's like to listen to the whole album it's like an hour and a half basically uh, a little shorter than that maybe an hour 20 to listen to the whole album uh which is great if you're multitasking and you got stuff to do but man it's a it's it's a lot and i love most of the songs on it so it's fine but i kind of enjoy having these short songs building into an epic conclusion that like kind of like what coheed and cambria did with their uh, their two, three, and four album was like the uh, on on in keeping secrets. It was the uh, camper Valorium three songs, and then it was the <clears throat> the final cut. Um, oh no, the Willing Well ones from uh, which ended with the final cut in uh, in Apollo four uh, volume one, and then in volume two they had the uh, oh what is it called now nah, now i'm forgetting it but they also had a suite of five songs the end complete that's what it was called end complete uh and those were always super epic like you looked forward to them they didn't always close the album but i think um i think four and f uh, uh volume one and volume two both were closers whereas camper valoriums happened and then there was a couple more songs like light in the glass and 2113 2113 very underrated coheed song in my opinion uh but anyways, uh, it, it kind of reminded me more of that, whereas we didn't really get that on, I think v Vaxis 1 kind of opened with this most epic song, and then everything else there was, was good, and there was bangers, but that was the most epic sprawling one, was the Dark Sentencer, which is one of the best Coheed songs ever made. Um, but this one really kind of broke formula. Like also Coheed almost has every time their second song, like usually their first one's a prologue or an intro and their second song's like the main, like boom, bangers. Like I almost expected Shoulders to be in that spot because it is kind of more of like a, a you know, guitar, uh, guitar forward, really heavier like riff. Uh, but it wasn't Beautiful Losers was just kind of like, it, it was a great song, but it wasn't, it wasn't like the, oh, the epic chugginess that you expect to be their number two. So I kind of liked that. It was kind of refreshing to have this break of fo formula. It did, wasn't a Domino the Destitute. It wasn't a even um, Century the Defiant. It wasn't like the most epic chuggy one uh, in there. It wasn't a Welcome Home, although I think that's technically third on the album, but still, uh, you know, it wasn't one of these things that's like, oh, that's the iconic song. They actually saved that for the end, which I think is like, La shoulders probably can find its way in there uh but but definitely ladders of supremacy in terms of that sprawling i saw a comment online somebody was like this seems like the child of dark sentencer and uh the willing well songs like it seems like that is the mix and i i think that's a great way to describe it uh and it's so epic so ladders of supremacy like i said is great rise and Anisha, now this was a single and it really grew on me. The more I listened to it, at first, Shoulders was like my number one. 
and then after this came out, I just kept coming back to it even more so uh, than Shoulders after a while because I kind of got bored with Shoulders. I'd listened to it so many times, kind of burnt out. Rise Nine Ish, never. Every time it comes in like that, and I like how on the album, Lars Supremacy like just flows into Rise Nine Ish. So it's almost like a one eleven minute song, even though they're very different. So it, but it is like a smooth transition going from that. So I'd love if they play that live. I wonder if they would play those back to back as well, because those two especially, all three of them kind of like go into one another, but those two especially just flow in it, and Rising and Anish is just so good, it's so good, the chorus is great, the verses are, are so epic, um, and it's just got that just driving guitar line through the whole thing. Uh, and it doesn't feel long, it's, as long as it is, I think it's a five minute song like I said. Do you want to be part of this review? Is that why you're so upset? Okay, you be part of the rest of the review. So, absolutely epic. I love it. I love just learning more of the concept, even though I don't read the comics, of the story uh, with Rise of the Nine I kind of, somebody did like a YouTuber I just watched, did an ex explanation video of like, um, of the first Vaxxas, so I kind of got to learn some of the characters, some of the story. So Nine I think is like some crazy warrior angel thing uh, at least that's what the description kind of sounded like I might be wrong but it's it's really cool again it plays off that whole father uh, and son dynamics not enough not enough mother love in this one although ma <laughs> some of the coheed lyrics they always include like sons and mothers and so I guess it is it is like son and mother but this is kind of focused on the father son relationship at least how I read the song um, uh, but maybe not. Maybe Nyanesha is the separate character who is the Great Destroyer. Um, but it's epic. It's totally epic. And uh, it's the penultimate song of the... I like how they placed it there. I, I think the placement of all these songs, honestly, make the albums flow so well. But the cherry on top and a song that just, again, blew me away, just like Ladders of Supremacy, these two songs especially just blew me away. Window of the Waking Mind, the kind of title... Uh, the, the title of the album uh, is the, the title track uh, just an epic eight minute sprawling song that just has so many epic changes like it is like five or six different songs it just changes so much in the tone it's kind of a, a, a view of everything Coheed has been everything Coheed uh, can become and it is honestly super ambitious but it works so well and it's definitely, uh, you know, these are the, my top three. I don't know where to put them. I think Rise Nay and Isha is probably, I enjoy it so much, but it's probably number three. And then I think Windows of the Waking Mind would be two and Ladders of Supremacy would be one. Uh, but they're all super close and they all, I just love the ending of this album so, so much because of them. Uh, and it's just awesome. It is it is epic. It has some of the best lyrics. Uh, really tells the story. Has some of like the dialogue thing that Koei does sometimes to kind of explain the thing they do in the prologue for uh, Vaxis One. Um, but it, it to everything works and it sounds so good. And then it closes out with a reprise, like I said, of uh, of um, oh. <laughs> I'm forgetting the name of it, but the reprise from, oh my goodness, we all go up in flames. I, I know the song, but I just can't think of it right now. Uh, Old Flames, uh, that's that's the one from the previous album. And that seems to be like the Vaxis, uh, like, you know, uh, the the first kind of chapter with with uh, Claudio, uh, Kilganon, and Coed and Cambria, like that story of the Cure kind of had its little piano flare, piano intro prologue thing that was in every single uh, one of those albums. And this one, it seems to be the Old Flames reprise uh, in various different ways. This one, it ends kind of like in a more orchestral thing, but then it just, if you just listen to this album on loop, it works so perfectly because you have the end of the song and then it kind of goes into Little Atlas singing that same reprise. Um, we all go up in flames going out in style and it's just so it's so beautiful and so perfect that it's honestly the more i listen to this album the more i i love it i absolutely love it
uh, I would give this album on a whole an 8 out of 10. Uh, I, I wouldn't give it maybe 8.5. It's honestly, I, I probably would say it's on par. It's a lot shorter, like I said, than the previous album. I love the last album. I think this one is just more like I'm going to throw on to listen to the whole thing. Whereas like Unheavenly Creatures, I think I'll go back to for Dark Sentencer, Unheavenly Creatures, The Gutter, Queen of the Dark. Um, so many bangers on that album. but And I love pretty much every song as well. But because it's so lengthy, it's hard to just sit through the whole thing uh, over and over again. Um, but in terms of this, yeah, I would say this is in their top five for me. I think my my albums for Coheed, probably Volume 1 from Fear Through the Eyes of Madness is still my favorite, and I don't think it'll be surpassed. It was just such an amazing thing. Also a longer album, 15 songs, and just musically, just so, and lyrically. Lyrically is the biggest thing. The lyrics, if, the, if Coheed can up their lyric game again, um, and just make these epic kind of like sci-fi, dystopian, future-sounding lyrics rather than using language that um, is just so commonplace or generic, you know. Uh, they could maybe get to that again, but I like this new kind of electronic, uh, almost prize fighter Inferno. Their last album was very electronic-based as well. Kind of going into a different vibe. I love the progression, and so I hope... Vaxis 3 will be even something different that I didn't expect because that's what I loved about this album I didn't expect it. So in terms of my rankings for 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 Coheed overall Vault, Fear Through the Eyes of Madness probably in Keeping Secrets after that then uh, Second Stage Turbine Blade I think I would have to put up there just because it's so raw and it's their first ever album and it's like it's just magical those three albums are like pure pure coheed like in its infancy but just so much passion i still think they have tons of passion now you see them play i love seeing josh i love seeing zach i love seeing travis and, and claudio all of them just you can see their 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 current performances they're loving this album they're super proud of it and they should be because honestly it's tied this one and vaxis one are in my four and five spot for sure uh, then no world for tomorrow probably not far behind uh, then Year of the Black Rainbow, uh, then probably Color Before the Sun. I don't know. It's hard with the the bottom three on my list are like the bottom three. I like some stuff from Color Before the Sun. Uh, I love some things from Ascension and Descension, but I don't love them all in their entirety. And I think Ascension and Descension were kind of the start of me like not being as hyped on them. But Coheed's still one of my favorite bands ever. Uh, probably my second or third favorite band of all time next to Dance Gavin Dance and The Deer Hunter. So I I love them. I've loved them uh, ever since uh, my friend in high school said, uh, you know, oh, this band, Coe and Cambria, man, they totally suck. And I was like, I got to check these guys out. And I listened to them. First thing I listened to was Welcome Home, of course. And uh, I fell in love with them from then. And I listened to all, everything they had, they had out. I think No Word for Tomorrow had just come out then uh, or was just about to come out. And I just absolutely love them i still love them i think they're on an upward trend since faxis one especially um unheavenly creatures blew me away this album's really stuck with me and even though i don't think it's as complex in all of the places where it shines with those especially last three songs and and the other ones i just really enjoy a disappearing act love murder one uh, love those songs uh comatose has really grown on me too um, beautiful Losers. All, all of these songs are so good. Embers of Fire is just such a beautiful opening. I just love how this album works together. And this is like almost a 30 minute thing. Nobody's going to watch this review now, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, it's mostly for me anyways, just to get it out there. But I absolutely love this album. I'm looking forward to Vaxxas 3 whenever that comes out. But for now, I'm just going to be listening to this album on repeat until... Uh, DGD's new album comes out basically uh, and oh and the deer hunter is coming out so there's so much good music in 2022 that I'm so absolutely psyched psyched and pumped for um, so my dog's going crazy he's barking at the thing over there so I'm gonna go I'm gonna sign off here but uh, yeah have you listened to Coed and Cambria uh, Vaxxas 2 a window of the waking mind yet if you haven't check it out it's awesome 
highly recommend it. I think this is a good place to start for new listeners as well. I think it's a great album for people to jump in and that have no lore or backstory with with the Amory Wars, with uh, Coed and Cambria. I think it's a great starting point and a good launch pad to, to explore their other music too. Although if this is the only album you listen to, uh, I get it. It's it's a great it's a great album. There's nothing wrong with it. So, uh, yeah, that is my review. Eight out of ten overall. Uh, maybe eight point five. It's pretty good. It's pretty darn solid. And the last three songs, especially if you check out nothing else, check out Ladders of, Supre- Ladders of Supremacy, Rise and Anisha, and Window of the Week. Combined, the last three. I gotta go. My dog's going crazy. Uh, take care.